This has been a really bad week for forks with the ring of death. Ah! This is from the Cannondale sign up. As you can see, just identified that. Got one here from the Cannondale Super 6, really deep ring of death. And we've got this one, I think, from a cube where we have ring of death as well. So now we work with a local guy called Carbon Reincarnation. Mark does a fantastic job. He's just down the road from us. They can get repaired relatively cheaply. But why does it happen? A lot of people don't really understand how a headset actually works. And they think this is, becomes from knocking backwards and forwards, riding a loose headset. It's not always the case because most riders can identify a loose he headset. It feels horrible when you ride. It just feels like you've got no handling. And I think most riders will be like, okay, let's sort this out. What actually really happens is this little compression ring starts to stay static and your fork rotates. So what should happen is that this should stay static and your fork rotate. What happens to create this is that this happens instead and you can hear that grinding. Oh, it's not nice. So what we need to do as mechanics, you see this little gap. So when the fork is intolerance, we have a little gap. And what we're trying to do is make sure that that grips and stays static so that this stays still. This is the bearing that's come out of it. This is what should happen. That should stay in your bike, the compression ring, and you should see a little gap. Now what's gonna happen is you now put the top cap onto this and you now tighten your top cap down that gap is going to close as it gets pushed into the bearing and that plastic bit is going to grip your fork and the bearing is going to rotate that's how things should happen the problem is that when this starts to happen you can see especially on cannondales the gap is so small that the gap just doesn't close and push down and the gap just closes on itself and you can see that if i just hold it up that gap just closes down highlight that here is an fsa compression ring you can really clearly see that gap it's almost being sprung open it's got much more of a gap so this ring of death can occur sort of one of three ways one there's a steerer tube is a little bit undersized so it's become undersized and you've not noticed you haven't tightened the top cap correctly not enough to establish play but enough to allow this to rotate the more common one is that these top bearings just get rusty they seize up and it becomes easier when you're steering to overcome the friction of this against a steerer than to overcome the friction in your bearings. That's not the case in this one. This one just hasn't been tightened down enough and this has just been allowed to free rotate. On this Q1, it was definitely a horrible seized up rusty bearing and it was much easier to uh, steer overcoming the friction of this than it was to overcome the friction of the seized up bearing. In these particular cases, what we're gonna do is take no risk, we're gonna get those repaired, we make sure everything's in spec, and then replace the entire headset. A few moments later. So we've just got this fork back from Carbon Reincarnation, I'm about to put it back together, but you can see the repair that Mark's done here. Essentially sanded down a whole load of it, wrapped some carbon around and brought it all back into specifications. So we now have the correct size steerer tube. When you're reconstructing these, a few things to look out for, especially with Cannondale headsets. Again, this one actually uses the aluminium compression ring. So we've got that gap that we can close. It's worth a little check just to make sure that if you see this gap here, as I push on this, that that is actually going to grip and you can actually get the gripping effect to function. And then your top cap. So with Cannondale's, you have this little top cap here, which is if you really want to slam everything and that should be pressing onto that compression ring, but not interfering with the paintwork so you should just see a tiny little gap between the top cap and the paintwork and this goes on top again make sure that's all gripping now this is where it gets interesting with cannondale because this is the system integration uh, compression bung that came with it the problem with these is that these top bits um, always bent and flared up and made everything come loose we have also got to make sure that this section here go into interface with the clamp part of the stem so you need to set the depth of this quite in a specific way. Also, Cannondale instructions say that these, if we come across them, should be replaced because it got superseded by this top cap design, which is actually recessed here, which is significantly better because this one always said, big warning, never install spaces on top of the stem, which confuses loads and loads of mechanics who, who wonder why everything bends. Now, the annoying thing so it also says you have an absolute maximum of 55 millimeters 
and this customer came in with a couple of spacers on top of their uh, stem. Thing is, as a bike mechanic who's reading the instructions, we have to reset it to specifications. What the rider does with it after that is, is up to them. So we're gonna have to replace all of these spacers, just how the customer had them, but all on the bottom and make sure that this is 55 millimeters and then replace our stem. We've just about got enough clearance at the top here. And then with Cannondale, we need to set this compression section here is in line with the bottom bolt. So it's gonna sit like that. And this needs to be to four newton meters. And then we can use a five millimeter on the top cap to set our bearing preload as normal. So you need to tighten this down enough so that these can no longer rotate. At the moment that's still rotating. So this needs to be tight enough that all that rotation is taken out. There we go, until we can't move that anymore, but the headset still freely rotates. So that's telling me that all this is now compressing, pushing onto that little ring, locking everything down. And then we can put our wheel in, straighten everything out, put our pinch bolts, knowing that as we do the pinch bolts up, that there is a compression bung on the inside there, pushing out on the carbon. There we go. You probably, with carbon forks, need to tighten this down more than you think you do because you can really make sure that compression ring is actually gripping fork. If it isn't, you're gonna end up with a ring of death. Hope you found this video interesting. As always, check your frame specifications. With modern bikes, don't take anything for granted. There are so many sort of manufacturer specific things to look out for. Anyway, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Get your comments down below. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.